Hey everyone, my name is Adara, and I'm here because I'm going to tell you guys about one of the craziest cases I've ever had. And in the process of doing so, I'm going to tell you about a piece of equipment that we have at Bellevue that's low tech, 100% reliable, and it's very efficient. But before I tell you what it is, I want you first to meet Willow. He's from Williamsburg, and he's what I like to call a super hipster. He has, you know, the beard, he has the calculator watch, he even has this hashtag tattoo next to his face. That means I think he killed a hipster at some point in time. <laughs> On top of that, I imagine that he's a type of hipster that only smokes organic hipster drugs like free-range amphetamine and kale-based crap. And I actually met him around 4 p.m. on the middle of my shift. He comes in when I get a notification from EMS that they're bringing in a 27-year-old male who's intoxicated on drugs, and he's febrile. And when I get that notification, I realize I need to prepare early. So I go get all my airway equipment ready, and I tell my nurses that we have a critical patient coming in. So that when I'm ready, when the patient rolls in to start my critical exam. So the nurse is telling me all of his vitals, he's tachycardic and hypertensive. Well, that fits along with him being intoxicated and agitated. But I look down and I notice he's incredibly diaphoretic. And at that point I realize, well, we should probably get a temperature on him. And the nurse says, well, actually, why don't we get a core temperature? And we realize at that point that he's very febrile. In fact, he's 107 degrees Fahrenheit. So I realize at that point I'm dealing with drug-induced uh, hyperthermia that's life-threatening. So we need to act quickly. So what are the critical facts that you need to know so that if you're ever in this case, you can take care of someone with hyperthermia? Well, the first thing you need to know is that hyperthermia is a spectrum disorder. And on one side, you have things like heat rash and heat cramps. Those patients we don't care about. We can discharge them. And on the other side, you have things that are concerning, like heat exhaustion, heat stroke. Those are the really scary patients that can die on you at any point. So what do they present with? Well, they have altered mental status. They can be delirious, they can have seizures, they can be comatose. They can also have tachycardia and hypotension, that's refractory. They can present with rhabdomyolysis and, and have renal failure, or delayed GI bleed secondary to gut ischemia or necrosis. And the one thing we really are concerned about is DIC in these patients. So what are the critical actions that we can take to save a life? Well, conventionally, we've heard about hyperthermia. We've heard about all these um, very high-tech devices that you can use, like intravascular cooling um, um, devices or even um, using a helicopter to cool your patients, right? All these things are very expensive and high-tech and not readily accessible. But at Bellevue, we have something called an ice bath. It is a stretcher with tarp, and it works better than anything else out there. Um, and what we do in these patients is if they have a temperature greater than 105 and they have something about them that makes them seem critical, either altered mental status, unstable vitals, we put them in the ice bath. And one thing you have to do is think early and, and, and clearly about your plan with this because it requires a lot of people. So once you decide your patient needs to go in the ice bath, you rally your forces and you say, okay, we need the ice bath, someone go get the ice bath. And in the, main, in the meantime, you get your volunteers and your PCTs and everyone else to get everything else moved together, because you only have about 20 minutes to cool these patients before you develop multi-system organ failure. So one thing you have to rally early on is ice, and you need to know where you get your ice from. At Bellevue, we have an ice maker, and I'll show you that in a second. So you get your volunteers, your PCTs, your nurses, your med students, everyone has to go get as much ice as possible. And be sure to emphasize that they need a lot of ice, because you don't want them coming back with a Ziploc bag, because you'll be sending them back. So tell them exactly what you need. In fact, I say go to the ice bath or the ice bucket and empty this. Get the patient belonging bags and empty it so that when they come back, they have about 50 pounds of ice with them. And we put the patient in the ice bath. It looks some, something like this. Um, these are old photos from like 10 years ago. Um, and the patient is completely submerged in ice. And while this is going on, you have to make sure that the patient has a rectal probe so you're monitoring their temperature their entire, the entire time because you don't want your patient to become hypothermic. So make sure that you stop at the right time. So if your patient goes in at 106, 107, you want to pull them out around 101, 102, because they can um, overshoot and become hypothermic. So for our patient, we took them out around 101. Now once you've decided, okay, we're going to start taking this patient out in about 30 seconds, you need to have an exit plan, right? Because where are you going to put this wet patient? So you want to make sure you have someone else grabbing a dry stretcher. And when the patient comes out of the, the ice bath, you have a dry stretcher with warm blankets and you start warming the patient up right away because they can overshoot very quickly. And once you've done that, um, you're pretty good. 
Now, there can be some complications in that your patients can start to shiver while they're being cooled down. And that can generate more heat. So you need to figure out, how are you going to do that? How are you going to um, circumvent that problem? And that's with sedation. So we actually gave our patient a total of 40 milligrams of Versed IV over the course of maybe 15 minutes. He was still awake. Our, our goal is to keep them at a RAS of like negative one and negative two, where their eyes are awake, they can like respond to some stimuli, but they're not able to lift their head off the bed and look around. Now, if the Versed doesn't work and your patient is still agitated or shivering, you can actually paralyze these patients and intubate them because that'll keep them from moving and they can cool very quickly. We didn't have to do that, but we were emotionally and mentally prepared and actually physically prepared because we had all our airway equipment out from the beginning, but we didn't have to do that. In fact, our patient did very well. Once we cooled him, after about 18 minutes, his mental status returned. We admitted him to the ICU for monitoring, and he signed out AMA the next day. <laughs> so what are your take-home points for this case? So first is that the ice bath is very reliable. I put an asterisk there because you might need to use some adjuvant um, medications like Versed, or you have to paralyze them and intubate the patient. But otherwise, it works 100% of the time. If you put something hot in ice, it will cool. It's also very efficient. It works quickly. It does one thing. It's going to cool your patient. Um, and it cools them very quickly. You have about 20 minutes, and it almost always works during that quick first 20 minutes. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. And the last thing is that it's low tech. It's a tarp on a stretcher. Now, if you don't have this at your own facility, that's OK. You can just take a regular stretcher and lay your patients out and flat. And that's what it looks like with the ice bath, um, or the, the, the bag of ice is like that. You just basically cover them with ice and cool them very quickly. It gets a little bit messy here because, as you can see, you can have ice dripping through the stretcher side rails. But if you have like, something that's hydrophobic, you can put it along the side rails, and your patient will, will, will be cooled efficiently. So I want to say thank you to everyone who helped me prepare this lecture. And that's it. Finished early. <laughs>